At 45, the East African country of Uganda is very young among nations, but its heritage dates back to prehistoric times. To enrich this heritage, different peoples at different times have traveled into the country where their interactions with the indigenous people have fused with their culture. But then the story of Uganda is a story of 65 indigenous people located in four geographical regions. One quickly observes the differences and identities through the work of their artisans, craftsmen and artists. These people endeavor to decorate their functional objects, not only to identify themselves, but also to attract users. Their work, which has fused with others, now constitutes Uganda's art and craft industry. A visitor who visits a part of Uganda will carry away a craft or an art piece which will be an experience about the villages, the cities, the landscape, the environment and the way of life of the people. There are as many experiences as there are varieties of art and crafts in Uganda and these varieties have attained a certain structure. One of the greatest skills that is found all over Uganda is weaving. Although each people weave in a different way, with a variety of material common to their environment. What the Ugandans are best at doing is baskets. They are professional basket weavers and they, are world, they, they produce world-class baskets that we also export. Um, these ones come from Western Uganda and they, there's a women group of over 100, in fact about 165 women make up this women's group and these baskets are dyed, they're, they're totally natural, they're dyed using berries, roots and leaves of plants and there's no chemicals used. And um, they make beautiful baskets, millet baskets and fruit bowls and trays now as well. These items are made primarily for home functions such as carrying and storing stuff. These items have now attained a touristic appeal and this has provided for a much needed household income. In Uganda, the tradition is for children to make their own toys. They make these toys from every available material within their reach. Again, the craft industry has seen their form of art. Children's playthings are now a major collection in the craft shops. Music in Uganda is a way of life. The various ethnic groups that live in Uganda may seem to share common instruments. They all play drums, flutes, xylophones, lyres and harps in different beats. 
But what distinguishes them are the carvings and decorations of the instruments, which are unique to each ethnic group. This has transformed the instruments into artistic pieces. Many collectors now pick these instruments for their artistic value than the music. This man is processing a bark cloth. The processing of bark cloth goes back hundreds of years and was unique to the interlacustrian kingdoms of Uganda. Originally, it was made for dressing, sleeping material, and as a shroud. Today, artists have reinvented it as an art material that could be used instead of canvas. The artists have taken it to another level. The back cloth is now used in fashion shows. UNESCO has recognized the making of back cloth as a rare traditional scale. The back cloth has been replaced by the textile over time, and Ugandans have widely put it to dressing. The way people in Uganda dress is artistic. Every function has its own dress. People put the wealth of color gifted in their nature to its best use, right from the countryside to the city. Ugandan designers have now blended fashions from outside to enrich the variety existing in the country. Carving is another important craft. The street carvers decorate furniture while the artist makes sculptures out of wood which is plentiful in Uganda's enormous forests. Pottery is another age-old craft in Uganda. Paleontological excavations have come up with pots as evidence of earlier civilization in Uganda. Throughout time, this pottery has been transformed, borrowing from other experiences. And on surface decoration, I exploit the ideas of the surrounding around uh, my society and dealing with the people's culture, dealing with, with the, their political influences and uh, economic influences, and then I use my pots as a, um, a painter would use a canvas. So I do a lot of uh, surface decoration. Besides the art and beauty of the ceramics, the calabash and gourd, which grow naturally all over the country, is used as a container for food and drink. 
There are calabashes for beer and wine and those for butter and milk. Now, these containers can be seen in the craft shop where the tourist has discovered a decorative use. Besides the other functional benefits of art in Uganda, art has slowly blended in the economic aspect by way of advertising and getting markets for other beverages. Ugandan coffee, for example, is famous all over the world, and the Ugandan artist is riding on that fame to market Uganda's crafts as coffee gifts packages. Unique Ugandan tourist experiences are also branded artistically with labels and crafts that are to attract. There is the Gorilla Coffee brand, for instance, an organic type of coffee which is grown where the mountain gorilla is found. The mountain gorilla is a rare animal and mountain gorilla tracking is a rare experience. It only happens in Uganda and its two western neighbors. This American, who owns a restaurant in New York, first tested Ugandan Gorilla coffee in America. He later on came tracking gorillas in Uganda. Hey, this is Sean. I have a restaurant called Habana Outpost in Brooklyn. There we sell Gorilla coffee, and here we just went to go see the silverbacks in Uganda. Unbelievable experience. The traditional Ugandan hat was a piece of art in itself. This architecture is disappearing rapidly. It is giving way to oriental designs which are common throughout Ugandan towns. European style buildings are also common. Kampala and the older towns of Uganda are therefore dominated by foreign architecture, oriental, and European. Many architects now favor an African decor. Metalworking is another craft that is as ancient as the country. The early monarchies looked at metal more for warfare than art and craft. Today's artist is making sculptures, furniture and crafts out of metal. The Ugandan has also embraced modern art. The fountain of this knowledge began with the establishment of an art school at Makere University. Margaret Crowley, the founder, wished to work on existing African art, making creative innovations which supplemented the artisan who was working on African crafts. Later on, the school's teaching scope expanded with increasing interest in Western modernism. Over time, the school products have impacted on the Ugandan art landscape, creating a movement that reflects the country's changing identity. <laughs>